Well, I think I underestimated my wood supply this year. Time to get to work. Remember all that wood we had out here? It's all gone. All that's left is this little pile and some logs to split. Got a little bit of cutting to do here. So I've got about 10 days left of, of wood probably. But it's time to get out and uh, get some work done. I need to collect some more wood. So I'm okay with getting some green stuff. I'm okay with getting a few. I've got a few down trees. But uh, got to get to work and get the supply back up. I just want to get through March this year, so I want to get two more months. Alright, so we've got a few trees to take down today and some dead ones to cut up. So I want to make sure I've got a good start, nice sharp chain. And what I found is what I use in the past, I've got these uh, hand files, you know, the little Husqvarna uh, kit. It's got the little guide on it and everything and the round file, I think it's 730 seconds. And you, you put this on the chain and then you, you know, you roll your, your file through and it's supposed to keep you straight. Eh, I found it works okay. Um, it's good for out sharpening out in the field, but eventually I've just kind of abandoned this thing altogether and just hand filed and, and uh, followed the guides on my own, um, kind of freestyle, I guess you'd say. But uh, this uh, file still works great the, from the Husqvarna kit. This was a, an Amazon purchase also. Um, I've said this about a thousand times. I pretty much order almost everything on Amazon. Uh, I, and we live about a half an hour from stores here. And so it's always easier for me to just jump online and uh, purchase things. So uh, I, I, just, I order just about everything on Amazon, but it also comes with the, the file here for the rakers. This also has the guide for the rakers as well, but I've pretty much worn through this thing, so it's broken. Um, but this allows you to um, set this on top of your chain and gives you the uh, correct height for, for the rakers. So. So what happens over time? I'm right-handed, and uh, so what happens is you're out hand filing, even if you have a guide, whether you do it um, you know, without a guide, you're always going to be stronger one way. This is my the comfortable way for me to sharpen, and so all the teeth that are facing this way get sharpened just a little bit differently than the ones facing the other way. So when I flip the saw around, and I'm sharpening this way, it's just a different angle for me and it's just not quite as comfortable and I end up not sharpening quite as well. Uh, and so what happens over time is you do this 10, 20 times, you end up with one set of teeth that are sharpened at maybe a little different angle, maybe they're not sharpened as much, um, and uh, maybe they're sharpened further back. Uh, and so you end up with your, your saw cuts, it cuts curves. Um, it doesn't cut well and it ends up cutting curves. So you're trying to cut straight through a log and, and you end up um, off to one side or it won't go straight or it binds and so you get all kinds of problems. So I'll show you what I'm doing to actually correct this. Um, so after every you know five or six times I sharpen the chain out in the field, I'll bring these chains in here and switch it out with one that I've already sharpened. Usually I have one ready to go. Um, but I'll show you what I'm using to get these sharp. So this is actually the Buffalo uh, electric chain sharpener. It is probably, I, th I think it's the cheapest chainsaw sharpener, uh, electric chainsaw sharpener on Amazon. Um, probably about the same price at uh, the tool stores um, also. Slide your chain in here. It's got a little guide here and then this is a, a stop to make sure that you're in the right position each time. This is a little clamp. This pinches the chain in there tight when you turn this up. 
and then it's got a few guide markers right here on the bottom so the the machine here has a, a guide on the bottom with various degree marks there's zero here all the way up to 35 and then the same thing on the other side up to 35 over here and a little indicator that tells you where you're at um, so basically this uh, determines the the angle of your your tooth now different chains have different angles so i always save these little guides this is one from the uh, who's Kavarna chain, but it tells you the model of the chain, uh, and then it gives you the different file. Uh, most all mine or all mine are seven thirty seconds, and then here it, here it gives you the angle of the actual um, tooth, and so this is what we're going to be adjusting here. All my who's Kavarna chains are H forty six or H forty seven, and so mine are all at twenty five degrees and with a 730 seconds file. The steel chain that I have, I believe is a 33RS, and that's right here, and so I'm at a 30 degree on this, these ones, so a little different uh, degree of the tooth. So I'm doing one of my um, RS32s here for my steel, so I'm setting it at 30 degrees, which is, uh, uh, you, you do this twice, you go through and do all the teeth that are at this angle, and then you flip this around to your other 30 degrees on this side to do your teeth on the other angle. Just gonna mark the tooth that we're starting with. And we're ready to go. Adjust it back just a little bit. It seems like it's cutting a little too heavy. All right, so we're back to our original tooth. So. Let's spin this around. All right, so go to our first tooth past our mark, and we're gonna adjust this whole thing back over to 30 degrees. 30 degrees on this side. Give it a test run here and make sure that we're not taking off too much or too little. I do actually like to file the rakers off while it's in here also. Um, it just works pretty good to tap those off. I'm not using a guide anymore, but every time I sharpen it, especially on here, I just take those rakers down a little bit and uh, that seems to work pretty well. Um, I do recommend getting a guide and I will get one eventually. So these rakers make a huge difference. They, they make a difference as to how far this tooth cuts each time it passes through. So if all your, if they're not equal between the left and the right slanted teeth, um, this one will be cutting through more than this one and again you're going to be cutting on curves and that could be very well the cause of that so um, it is recommended to have a guide and that's actually something I need to pick up since I wrecked my other one but um, for now we'll just tap these off and uh, that'll be good enough. Definitely a handy little tool to uh, to have. Um, as always, I'll put a link over on Amazon to the to the sharpener. Um, I really like it so far. So I've used it a few times. I think I've sharpened all my chains with it. And uh, sometimes there's been a few of my chains that I've gotten really far off with hand sharpening. And it takes a, a few a few times through the grinder to get them back to to where they're supposed to be. So it's a good idea to to uh, not let them go too long and if you can get an electric grinder like that or take them up to the hardware store and have them you know run a good sharpening on them get them kind of back to where they're supposed to be but definitely a, a nice tool to have 
So we got a nice, nice sharp chain on here now. Let's get it tightened up and get out and cut some wood. Man, is it nice to get out and cut with a sharp chain. It makes a huge difference, I'll tell you. It's, uh, although this wasn't a great test of the, of the sharpness, it was a pretty old soft wood, but uh, uh, still, man, just cuts through like butter, and it's, it's such a, a nice thing. Um, the wood chips that we're getting, the wood uh, um, shavings, you can see a lot of real nice long shavings coming off there, so um, that tells you you got a pretty, pretty sharp chain. Um, I can tell some of the teeth are still, I've hit a few barbed wire fences and things, so I've got a few teeth that are um, pretty pretty destroyed so it'll take a while of sharpening to get that uh, back to factory but um, that little little electric chain uh, sharpener works really well um, it's a great addition to hand filing which I'll do out in the field here but uh, uh, works really well so if you've been following along you you remember what happened to me last winter I moved into this house had no wood stored up and, and heated the house all winter um, with some help from family but uh, most of the majority of the wood uh, supplied off our property here and um, and cutting uh, and, and processing it myself if you want to see a guy struggle through the winter, I'll put a link to the playlist up in the corner there. You can check out some of those videos. Pretty entertaining. But uh, I like getting out and cutting in the winter. I don't mind it. It's actually, I, I didn't cut that much this summer. It's hot. Uh, it, it's just, uh, you know, in the woods, mosquitoes and poison oak and poison ivy and, and all the other things that you get into in the woods uh, in the middle of the summer. It's just uh, much more pleasant and open to get in here. It's uh, easier to drag wood around and cut through and, and um, the ground's frozen. You have to deal with mud and stuff like that. So I actually prefer to do a lot of my cutting in the winter. Between now and probably April, I'll probably be doing a lot of cutting. I'm gonna get in and cut a trail out through here and, uh, and so I'll be processing a lot of wood anyway. Uh, hopefully the leftovers from that will be you know, for next year. So hopefully I help somebody out who's uh, looking to find a, a good solution for sharpening chains. Um, it's been a process of learning for me and I'm still learning. I, I haven't got everything perfected. Uh, there'll still be a lot to, of honing of those skills over the years to really be a, an expert at, at getting these things sharp. There's a lot to it, and, uh, but man, does it make a difference, sharp, sharp chains. Uh, it's, uh, it's huge. I love putting a fresh, brand new chain on a chainsaw. It just tears through. That first, uh, that first cut is just great, so. As always guys, hit thumbs up on the video. I'd love to have your support in that way. And uh, if you'd like to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, all that good stuff, links in the description to those. I'd love to have to, to see you guys over there and uh, we share all kinds of different things that we, we don't share, always share in videos. So uh, I'd love to see you guys uh, on that side of things. And as always guys, subscribe if you wanna follow along and thanks for watching. Have a good one.